Hi, friends. Welcome back to my Facebook page. Um, I had done a quick little recipe video the other day, and it seemed to do really well. And then I was thinking about all the things that I would could use in my pantry cupboard that would be, you know, smart for anybody to have, even if they're going back to, like, school, if they're just planning on microwave meals, if they are doing, um, they've got, like, a, a electric skillet or something like that. And I was thinking, sometimes people don't really know what they should have on hand, and when they go to need something, they don't have it. And so I thought I should just put together a quick little top 20 of the pantry items that some people should have on hand at all times to help enhance the flavors and the tastes of their foods. So um, follow along with me. I've gone to the Dollar Tree and decided to get 20 items that would fit in a little tote that, you know, like a tote box or a tote crate or something, um, and be easily stored for somebody that's in an a, a efficiency apartment, a college room, um, somebody that lives in a studio apartment and only has a accessibility to hot water, um, through a coffee maker or, um, a hot plate or microwave, you know, something that's small or whatever. But I figure that, you know, sometimes people just don't really know what to put in their pantry. And they'll go to want to flavor something up and they just don't have the right stuff. So I figured I'd put together a quick little dibbly-doo on what I feel are the top 20 items that belong in a pantry. And so I'm going to start with the top 10 the 10 that I would always have on hand. So I'm going to go to the next clip and we'll show you what we've got. Okay, welcome back. And so the first thing that I would suggest that you have, obviously, would be salt. Everybody needs a little bit of salt. Salt is always good to have to add to things that you need to enhance the flavors of. So Obviously, salt is one good thing to have, okay? The next thing that I would advise would be pepper. Pepper is also another good thing. It's one of those, you know, the, the old one too. Here we go, black pepper. To be able to cook some things efficiently, you do need to have some oil sometimes to add to recipes or whatever. Um... Dollar Tree has this little bottle for a dollar. It's canola oil. You can also probably get any other like type of oil there. I just usually go for canola oil. Um, this actually isn't as cheap as you would assume it would be, but for starting out for a pantry, all of these things I got at the Dollar Tree. So you could have a quick little pantry get together, you know, like of, of collection of things for as you know, little as 20 bucks just to start you out. So I suggest starting out with one of these. And then as you run out, you go to the store and you spend an extra 50 cents on a bottle twice the size. But anyway, so we needed some sort of oil um, or fat for cooking. And so Golden Chef canola oil is what I chose for that. Next on my list is the other two. And, you know, like that I always put in everything and that's garlic powder and onion powder now some people prefer garlic salt i just usually use salt on my own that way you can put as much or as little as you need depending on how things already come flavored but garlic powder and onion powder are always really good to have to add extra stuff and extra flavor to those things even if you're bringing home um processed food type meals like to microwave it's still good to have that kind of stuff to be able to put on them and another thing that i like to have is mrs dash and this is the dollar tree version of mrs dash um it's got a lot of the good stuff in it like garlic onion carrot black pepper and then red crushed red pepper parsley and lemon oil so there's a few different things in there and it's a nice little mix but Basically, salt-free seasoning, Mrs. Dash, is always another good one to have on hand. 
something that's always good to enhance the flavors of some of those things that you can find that are microwave meals um, for Italian stuff, like even as, as much as raviolis in the can, you can bump up the taste of that stuff by just adding a little bit of Italian seasoning. So that's another thing. I'm going to turn it around here so that you can see what's inside there. There's marjoram, thyme, basil, rosemary, um, savory, and oregano. So that's basically just a blend of other spices. And I'm actually going to try and experiment with some of this and the Mrs. Dash at some point in time and try to recreate um, a salad dressing that I like. And so that right there is another one that I like to have on hand. Something else that's really good to have on hand is ground cinnamon. People add this to their coffee to cut the acidity. I find that it's good to be able to add a little bit of, um, I don't know, homemade taste to some things. And you wouldn't think that it has, has a savory application as much as it would go into a sweet application. But this is good to have around if you want to make some um, cinnamon sugar for toast or whatever. And then the next thing that I have in my list is bullion. Bullion is always good if you are working with like ramen or some sort of soups. Sometimes you might need a bullion cube to help bump that up. These are also good to have around when you're not feeling well. Um, there's a high salt content to them, but they actually do calm your belly down when you're not feeling very well. So you can put that in a cup of hot water and dissolve it and that actually is a good clear liquid on those days you're not feeling well. And then the last in the top 10 is seasoning salt. And I'm going to flip this around so that you can see what's in this too. This has got bunches of spices, paprika and turmeric. Um, it's got some other stuff in there that you probably might not want. But, you know, sometimes seasoned salt is really good on one of those burgers that you get from like the fast food restaurants or um, if you're microwaving one of those, you know, dollar burgers from the burger from the from the uh, Dollar Tree, it might be good to slap some of this on there and give it a little bit of extra flavor. So that's the top ten that I've got for now. I'm going to come back in another clip and I'm going to show you the other ten that will round out the top twenty. But those right there are the top. 10 that I would suggest having if you're just starting out and you want to make sure you have just about everything that you will need within arm's reach. The next clip that I'm going to do is going to be more of accessories or other not so um, desired, I shouldn't say it like that, not so um, common um, things that still are really beneficial to have around and I'll be right back with that. All right. And welcome back. Um, I've got the next 10 that I have ready to go here. So these ones are ones that are suggested and feel free to inter interchange the ones on this list with the ones off the other list that, you know, like you might trade out for your personal preference. But this is what I have determined that would be in my top 20 list. So if I were to only be able to get the 10, it would be that first 10. If I were to be able to add a dollar or two to every, you know, to my, to my thing, these are the way I would add them and in this order. Okay. So these are the things in the order of how I would add them on. So first I'm going to say sugar. Now, again, this is a small bag of sugar, but this right here would get you by um, for a buck. The ones that you can buy at like Walmart or a regular grocery store, you're going to get more for your money. This is just a little one pound package. Um, so like I said, this would get you by. Um, and obviously upon opening this up, you would want to make sure that you put this in some sort of airtight container. Um, before just putting it back into your little pantry caddy, whatever, there. Um, but that right there would be good to mix for, you know, sweetening some coffee, obviously, adding on top of some cereal, and also adding to your cinnamon sugar if you were to be making some toast. But like I said, it's always good to have around. 
you know what, for the occasional, just, you know, microwave cake you decide you want to bake, whatever. And then, obviously, next for me would be flour. I would use this if I had a full kitchen, but if I had, like, a pantry um, that didn't have a full oven or something, I might not get a bigger container of this, but I might use this um, in my, you know, pantry stash, but not the one that I would bring out all the time, obviously, but it's always good to have some flour to thicken up some gravies or add to sauces or whatever, and then after that, here come the other ones that I would have. I would do minced garlic. Now, minced garlic is always good to have around because it's already chopped up. It's generally in oil. Let's make sure that that's what this one is in. Um, let's see. Yep, garlic and, oh, this one's in water and phosphoric acid, which is helping to keep it preserved. So, you know, that's pretty much what it is. It's garlic in water. Um, but minced garlic is always good to add to some sauces, like, um, you know, SpaghettiOs. Think about it like that. That's, you know, that would bump it up a notch. You kick it up a notch a little bit by adding a little bit of garlic and adding some of these spices. And then with that being said, I do my own um, crock pot cooking. I have a one pot crock pot meal that I make that is just absolutely delectable and I use soy sauce in it. So if you have access to a crock pot, perhaps soy sauce might be a choice. It is pretty much just like a liquid salt with a little bit of flavoring. Um, but that's always good to have. And this actually was one that I got at the Dollar Tree. So it was a La Choy, um, which is a brand name. And obviously it is just soy sauce, you know. So there it is. It's the real deal, guys. So soy sauce is another thing that I would particularly like in my pantry. Another thing to dress up those box potatoes are parsley flakes. So parsley flakes are always good to add a little bit of freshness to some of your recipes. Um, if you're making a lot of ramen, you could experiment with a bunch of these different, you know, additives to go into the ramen. If you've got one of them little ramen pots or something, you know, I would imagine that this right here would make a good hot pot type thing, you know, like... Um, adding it to it and just you know like having this on hand is always going to freshen up a dish so parsley flakes to your potatoes parsley flakes to your spaghetti sauces things like of that nature so that's always good to have the next thing and this is not me so much but other people may want that because they like the hot chili powder that, you know, gives a little bit of heat, a little bit of kick to some of the recipes. And again, for a buck, why not? And if you use all this stuff sparingly, you're going to be able to have these things around for quite some time. So your initial investment is going to last quite a bit. The next thing is ground cumin. Now, I myself don't use cumin. I haven't used cumin, but when I did a little bit of a um, ask around, a lot of people said that cumin is something that they put in a lot of things. And it's, I've heard that it's put in quite a few recipes. So if you eat out a lot and you might want to dress up um, or not eat out, but if you eat like processed foods, perhaps this might help make it taste more homey. I'm, I myself, I'm going to look for some recipes to try to use cumin in just so that I can try it. I've never had it before. I bought it purely for this video and because people said that this would be in their top 20 in their spice cabinet to have. And I know a lot of food around the world contains some sort of cumin. The next thing that I would have would be some chopped onion. Now, chopped onion is basically just onions that are dehydrated. So you can stick this in a little bit of warm water and it would rehydrate and they would go great on, um, let's say, hot dogs, stuff like that. If you were to put this in with some of that garlic in water and rehydrate the chopped onion, that would be a nice little additive to a canned spaghetti sauce or a jarred spaghetti sauce. Or, heck, if you only have tomato sauce and you have spaghetti noodles... 
Italian seasoning, some of this chopped onion, some of that minced garlic, salt, pepper, and you've got a good little homemade sauce, right? All from your microwave. The next thing that I would have, and this isn't really like a pantry item that it's more of a condiment, but I think every pantry item, you know, like every pantry needs some Parmesan cheese. So there you go. This one says grated topping with Parmesan. So this isn't like the real thing, but for the Dollar Tree to start you out, why not? It even comes with a, a recipe on the back on making some spaghetti. So anyway... That right there is number 19. And then number 20 would be vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is what they had at the Dollar Tree. I myself generally use white distilled vinegar. This one is a raw unfiltered and it was a smaller bottle. They had a larger bottle, but I wanted to try this one because it said it was raw and unfiltered. And so I figured, hey, what the heck? If I'm going to be making some salad dressings or whatever, this is the stuff that you would want to use for that. People sometimes put this on French fries. So vinegar is good to have around for other applications as well, like cleaning. So white vinegar isn't just for cooking, guys, but they didn't have any white. They only had apple cider. So I got the apple cider vinegar and leaping lizards, you know, come on. I had to get that because of the lizard. It doesn't look like a lizard. It's leaping leopard, not lizard. Ha! Huh. Maybe I should read. But anyhow, cider, vinegar, get it. Well, get vinegar anyway. So, um, I'll be back with my outro. And that right there was the ending of the top 20. So, there we have all 20 displayed right here for you. There we go, all of them in a happy little bunch. And now I'm going to do the out. So there you have it. Those are the 20 pantry items that I would have on hand at all times. And there are others that I would obviously probably have as well, which are the bonus items of ketchup, mustard, mayo, and relish, just to have around. Um, Obviously, you can get that stuff for free from just about any restaurant or any convenience store. So, you know, like every time you go in, you grab a couple of packets and stick that in your thing so that you have those. Or get them at the Dollar Tree, too. Um, generally speaking, once you get those things, though, they need to be refrigerated. So I would suggest getting the packets so that you can have them on hand if you're not going to use them all the time. Like if you just feel like every once in a while you're going to be making a bologna and cheese sandwich, have a couple of those squeeze packets of mayo or mustard around. Some of that stuff needs refrigeration and not everybody has a refrigerator. So these were all shelf stable things that you didn't need to refrigerate after opening and um, aside from possibly the minced garlic, you may need to refrigerate that since it's not in an oil or anything. And it's not, quote, unquote preserved. Um, but everything else is shelf stable and does not require refrigeration. So, um, like I said, I hope that this might help somebody to figure out what they need in their pantry. If they're just starting out, if they're looking for a hint to give to somebody that's just starting out. If they're looking to help somebody that's a brand new homeowner start their pantry and um, find things that would be useful in a brand new kitchen that maybe they don't think of as soon as they're moving in because they've got so many other things to think about. So I hope that this is useful and maybe I will be coming back to you with some recipes using all these fun items that I've got now. Hmm. That's probably what I'll be doing. I'm going to try to do some Dollar Tree budget meals and using just Dollar Tree items that I can find at the Dollar Tree and using these pantry items to be able to dress them up and make them fitting meals to be able to use. Um, so stay tuned if you guys want to see more from Rev BTB's budget pantry. Drop a comment. And let me know you want to see something. Tell me a recipe that you would like for me to try. Um, 
I'm going to be doing a $5 challenge, I think, where I go to the Dollar Tree and buy five items. I can only spend five bucks, and I'm going to try to make a dinner for at least two people out of those five items using my pantry stuff that I just showed you and what I get from the Dollar Tree. So that's pretty much what I'm going to try to start doing is these pantry challenges. So... I hope you'll stick around and have fun with me as I try this Dollar Tree Pantry adventure. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.